Due to the fierce display of might shown by Zhao Yun and Zhang Fei, Liu Bei was able to safely escape to Jiangsha. Having defeated Liu Bei, Cao Cao confidently turned his army towards Jiangdong. Sensing Cao Cao's intentions, Zhuge Liang went and proposed an alliance to Sun Quan. For Sun Quan, there was little merit in joining forces with Liu Bei's meager army. But Liu Bei was the only one in the land willing to oppose the might of Cao Cao. Uncertain of how to proceed, Sun Quan was approached by Zhuge Liang. He explained that Liu Bei would continue fighting even if Sun Quan were to surrender. For he would not give up until he had made his dream come true, no matter what the cost. Those words pierced the heroic Sun Quan's heart and caused him to staunchly refuse Cao Cao's demands for surrender. Meanwhile, Liu Bei dispatched Zhao Yun to the battle so that he could launch a joint attack with Sun Quan. Soon, the site of their decisive battle, Cherbi, was filled with Cao Cao's massive naval forces. And facing them was the hastily formed alliance of Liu Bei and Sun Quan. As the two armies prepared to engage in heated battle, neither side could know that the key to victory lay in the palm of the sleeping dragon's hand. The fate of this battle depends upon the direction of the wind. We must ensure that our strategists' attempts to control the wind are unobstructed. Cao Cao certainly not sparing any men this time, huh? And our brother, he wants us to tackle that lot head on. You're not scared, my lord. I'm excited, boy. I'm looking forward to a decent fight. That's funny. I was just thinking the same thing. Besides... Our strategist has prepared a plan that cannot fail. Why does the fire attack have to wait for the wind? If we start the fire now, it will simply turn back upon us. I don't believe all this prayer nonsense is going to change the winds. Are you sure we can trust this guy? Lord Liu Qi was sent away by his father and has taken refuge with our lord. He is a wise and courteous man. I just hope Lord Zhang Fei doesn't take out his anger on me. Lord Zhang Fei used to sell meat and wine. I bet he drank more than he sold, huh? I wonder what made him decide to become a warrior. What's with all the secrecy? I don't like that Zhuge Liang. My lord, it's me. You probably don't remember me, I guess. I've been with Lord Liu Bei since the Yellow Turbans, but I've never been so scared. 
I have a wife and children, you know. I can't afford to die. But I suppose I must have faith and fight. I'm sorry, my lord. You can't go any further. With this battle, we must set the stage for the three kingdoms to be formed. However, Cao Cao will not make it easy for us. Lord Strategist? Never mind. It's nothing. Zhao Yun. How goes Lord Juga Liang's preparations? He has just begun the prayer ceremony. It's all up to him now. Lord Zhao Yun! I come with orders from Lord Juga Liang. He wishes us to quietly begin the march. Quietly? We are to work our way around at Cao Cao's escape route, and he wants us to strike before Sun Quan's army can. I understand. I will leave Lord Zhang Fei in charge of guarding the prayer ceremony. Yes, my lord. Lord Liu Qi, will you please lend me your strength? Of course, Lord Zhao Yun. You have my gratitude. Now we must hurry. This way, Lord Zhao Yun. Lord Zhuge Liang has prepared a boat for you. I wish I knew what our strategist was thinking. How can he possibly overcome these numbers? And just what is this plan of his anyway? are aflame. The fire attack has worked. It's all just as he predicted. This means Cao Cao should start retreating next.
you get in here? Over there! It's south-south! We must get chased! of the enemy commander. and the path of justice has fallen before me. That should have bought my lord enough time. It would appear that Cao Cao has already begun his retreat. Forgive me, Lord Jugen Liang. Please give me the order to pursue after him. Indeed. Godspeed, Zhao Yuan. Guan Yu. I would like for you to accompany him. Our victory is not complete until Cao Cao is eliminated. Lord Zhu Liang. I ask that you do it for the sake of our lord. I have failed in my task. There is no excuse. I ask that you do it for the sake of our lord. Your son is a fine warrior, my lord. He takes after you. And what of your second son? Is he still too young to fight? I can't believe we actually beat them. Lord Zhang Fei has gone on ahead. We must pick up the pace if we are to catch up in time. I hear you owe a debt of gratitude to Cao Cao, my lord. But please, show him no mercy. Lord Juga Liang is so calm. It seems like he expected to win all along. I saw you playing Go with Ma Liang the other day, my lord. Did you win? That Cao Cao sure can run fast. It's me, my lord. You remember me from the yellow turbans? Come, my lord. We must give chase. Together we will claim victory, and I will regain the respect of my family. A merchant here? Now that's dedication. Welcome! Cao Cao couldn't have gotten very far. Father, let's hurry after him. Huh. Now, to Cao Cao. 
Lord Jugen Leong says that Cao Cao is making for the mountain. Afterwards, you will head for Nanjun. We must stop him before he reaches the mountain. We shall take a moment to review our ranks before we march. Hesitation. My blade has betrayed my heart. I hate to say this, but we're going to need reinforcements. To retreat is not necessarily to lose. There's no way through. We'll have to find another path. Can't let you through here. Tremble in fear, my soul. Is there no way through, huh? Report! It seems that the enemy reinforcements have arrived. You must always be 
No one's going to interfere with my brother's escape. You are indecisive. You can't kill our can Silence! I will take Lord Sao Tso's head. I have no choice. Father. Tremble in fear before I shall free your soul! I bring news. We've discovered another path. To regret this moment. I claim another victory in the name of my brother. They're trying to sneak their way in. Crush anyone who tries to get through. Father, it looks like we can climb up here. We can't afford to lose any more of our allies. Our scouts have spotted Cao Cao's men resting. If we hurry, we might catch them. Excellent, Father. Well done, as always. Out of my way! Continue on west, Father. I will sneak up on Cao Cao from the south. Very close to victory. We cannot fall behind. Tremble, you fight with fear. I will stomp you like an ant. Let's see if you can get through my defense. There you are. Stand your ground, my lord. Is there no way through, Paul? Come for me, Guan Yu. Then I shall have to face you. What's the matter? Aren't you here to kill me? Of course I am. I cannot allow you to go free. Tremble in fear, my blade. I couldn't kill Cao Cao. I just couldn't. I know. I had already taken that fact into consideration. With this, the stage is now set for Lord Liu Bei's rise to power. It is time to walk a path fraught with great danger. The alliance between Liu Bei and Sun Quan struck a resounding victory at Cherbi. This crushing defeat forced Cao Cao to put his ambitions on hold. However, as Cao Cao had managed to escape unharmed, Sun Quan was unable to take any decisive actions. As long as Cao Cao was alive, they must slowly chip away at his strength and work towards building their ideal world. This was Zhuge Liang's plan to help Liu Bei turn his dream into reality. With Cao Cao unable to strike, Liu Bei turned his attention away from Sun Quan and built up his military forces. He then invaded four of the territories in southern Jing. Upon being sent to attack Changsha, Guan Yu found himself face to face with a most powerful opponent. It was the veteran general Huang Zhang, who served beneath Han Xuan, the prefect of Changsha.
Han Xuan is a weakling. But if he has experienced officers in his ranks, then this may take some time. Against you, Lord Guan Yu. Do what you will with us, but please spare the innocents in the castle. Our brother will treat you all with mercy. And so, Liu Bei obtained the four territories of Southern Jing, as well as the skilled officers Wei Yan and Huang Zhang. He was also joined by the strategist Pang Tong, who was said to be a match for even Zhuge Liang himself. Meanwhile, in return for his assistance at Chirbi, Sun Quan demanded that Liu Bei hand over Jing. Zhuge Liang replied only that they would eventually return the province, but he did not give a clear answer as to when. Furious though he was, Sun Quan deemed it too dangerous to attack Liu Bei at that time. Instead, he sent his younger sister, Sun Shangxiang, to marry Liu Bei in the hope that it would improve relations between the two kingdoms. It was then that Liu Bei received a request for reinforcements from Liu Zhang of Yi. Fearful of Cao Cao after his conquering of Guangzhou, he had come to ask his relative Liu Bei for assistance. Zhuge Liang and Pang Tong recommended that they go on the pretense of assisting Liu Zhang, but then attack him instead. The land of Yi to the west, also known as Ba Shu. If Liu Bei could capture that territory, then the land would be divided in three between Cao Cao, Sun Quan, and himself. This was the path to his land of virtue. This was Zhuge Liang's Three Kingdoms strategy. Though he did move to assist Pang Tong and the others, Liu Bei did not attack Liu Zhang. Even standing before Yi's Loa Castle, he did not make a move. For within him was a virtuous heart that he could not turn against. Mm -hmm. So you won't consider attacking Chung Du, huh? I cannot betray Lord Liu Chang. But my lord, the people of Yi province desire your rule. Silence. My army stays put. That is an order. Now then, I hope you don't mind helping me out, lads. Not at all! I crush enemy 